Good afternoon, everyone. Following up on the Shivalush eruption in Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia. Well, now the Volcanic Ash Advisory says, nope, we made a mistake. This is a US-based satellite system following volcanic eruptions. We made a mistake. It wasn't 70,000 feet. It was only 23,000 feet. Although you have to think for the last five decades, satellites have been pinpointed on this area to detect missile launches during the Cold War. They have the best of the best of the most precise satellites to see even just ignitions from ground from, say, a rocket coming out. And they made a 70,000 foot call on ejecta and then they so quickly backtracked and said, no, it's only 23,000 feet. I could imagine a 25 or a 30,000 foot eruption might have some conjecture, maybe even 25 to 35. But sure not from 70,000 feet downgraded to 23,000 feet. That's fishy. Additionally, in the same days, spaceweathernews.com coming out saying, oh, there's been two stratospheric eruptions that are making all of our sunsets purple. It's not this one in Shivalush, it's the other two. So don't worry, when you see purple sunsets because of stratospheric aerosols, it's because of the equatorial eruptions, not because of Shivalush. Don't look down there. So this is really fishy for me what's going on. Let's dissect into the facts. I'll let you come to your own conclusion. I'll just present you with the information, and here we go. And how prepared are you for emergencies? Long-term food storage, My Patriot Supply, the two-week grab-and-go food crate, or the four-week food supply. The link's in the description box below, and it's a way to support the ADAPT 2030 channel. I'm going to start you over here, Kamchatka Peninsula, just west of the Aleutian Chain, right next to Alaska. Now, during the Cold War, this area was a known possible invasion spot for the jump-off point to come to the United States. And then we have the volcanic advisory here, ash up to 70,000 feet, Shivalush, 21,000 meters. Now, what they're trying to say is the difference between the JMA and the American system between metric and English system caused the difference. And I'm saying, you know what? They've been doing this for how many decades now? Do you really think this one eruption, they just got it wrong accidentally? So ash up to 70,000 feet. News media picked up on this right away, started circulating the news. I mean, what do you expect? It came from a government agency, National Weather Service Anchorage, as well as agencies across the United States and Russia putting this out that say, Shivalush, volcano issued, volcanic ash advisory was an error. The height of the ash was only 23,000 feet. We apologize for any inconvenience. And I'm thinking, all right, they backtracked on that because the original eruption would have put it at VEI-5, up at 21 kilometers into the sky. Now, you have to think about Pinatubo. That was huge. That was 35 kilometers up into the sky. Quite different. So 21 kilometers versus 35 kilometers substantial difference. Nonetheless, it would be enough to put more particulates in the atmosphere to cause a cooling effect directly over the northern hemisphere, right in that area that would circulate all the way over to the UK, through Canada, and then back around through northern Asia. They do say an eruption did take place, but here Shivalush highlighted for you. Now I want to take it right back to the Cold War, 1950 onward. So you have to realize that this place has been pinpointed by satellites to detect missile launches with infrared and you know how small a missile launch is comparatively to a volcanic eruption. This is one of the most covered areas on the planet, hands down. In case there was an invasion from Russia, a missile launch from Russia. Yet somehow they mistook a very small eruption for an extremely large eruption. Now here we go, I'm going to bring you back in time a little bit. May 9, 2019. Infrared picking up the eruption here, Shivalush as well. Are you telling me that the infrared satellite just somehow broke down this time and they misjudged it all? Take a look at the ash plume. I mean, you could see it from the satellite, but where when we look for that information today, I can't find it. I searched for over two hours to find those eruptive dates from the 24th through the 26th, and I cannot find an image out there. If you know where the links are to take a look at this thing in live time, as there should be GIFs of the rolling every 10 minutes, every half hour from those two days. But you know what? It's off the net. And Uluan down in Papua New Guinea, of course, they can see the ash. Infrared, it's very discernible. 
This was also a huge stratospheric injection, 65, 70,000 feet equatorial, first week of August. And of course, they can see it in Ubinas in Peru, July 19th, but they can't seem to find the one in Chivalouche. It just disappeared under the cloud cover. It was a miscalculated eruption. So I was picking up the Pacific Northwest infrared off Himwari 8. It only goes back to the 28th. But the eruption would be just a sliver north off the map here in Kamchatka. Now interestingly, or coincidentally, at the same time, August 28th and 27th, spaceweathernews.com, why are we seeing so many purple sunsets? So they actually go into the stratospheric eruptions during the same day that this happened and they backtracked and downgraded. We have the USGS downgrading earthquakes all the time. Now we have volcanic eruptions being downgraded. They talk about the Ryok eruption, that's just a little bit east of Kamchatka, as well as the Ulawan volcano erupting down on Papua New Guinea. Both of these eruptions, particulates high in the atmosphere circulating the planet, now turning our sunsets purple. Violet beams, if you will. And the article's well written, they talk about how these fine aerosols scatter blue light and that's why we get this purple well you know the year without a summer they had quite a few oranges purples and yellows as well in the paintings at the time and Sear here putting out an amazing image of these sunsets cast the purple by volcanic gas and you have to ask yourself what are the possibilities of the most highly studied and satellite studied areas covered area on the planet that makes a misjudgment saying 70,000 feet and then they downgrade it to 23,000 feet. That's a three times decrease and a three times miss. That is so far out of the standard deviation of possible misses that, you know, people would lose their job over that. Secondly, very difficult, if not impossible, to find images of the eruption in this same area. And third, spaceweathernews.com, article trying to explain away why our sunsets are purple now because of stratospheric injection. Three strikes and you're out. Way too coincidental. There can't be three coincidences in the same set of days explaining away the same phenomenon. And I talk about this in my presentation, Winter is Coming, Cycles of Change and Transition. More volcanic eruptions due to increasing galactic cosmic rays as well as the wandering magnetic poles. It's going to be a coupling of effects and here we are. Are they trying to mask this? that it was a large eruption that'll have an imminent cooling effect. And because the explanation of two other eruptions will now explain away their precipitous drop in temperatures rolling into the Northern Hemisphere winter. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video and I encourage you to do your own research. All the links are in the description box below for tonight. And again, if you find the gifts or the actual eruption over that area of the planet with satellites infrared, please send me the link because I was unable to find it after two hours of looking.